Hey, and welcome to Matt and Jess TV. I am Matt Roast here with Jessica Bun Bun to get into True Detective Night Country and the Tuttle family, aka Tuttle United. Okay, listen, <laughs> let's be talking about the Tuttles because when they dropped that in the last episode, I was just like, oh my goodness. I know that most true detectives are their own thing each season. But there's no denying it at this point. This season is directly connected to season one. Yeah. Like, you could have made some sort of arguments for the spiral or mentioning, you know, maybe an Easter egg of, you know, Russ's dad. But the minute that they dropped Tuttle United, it was like, no, this is absolutely connected to season one. Yeah, like, there's clearly something left over from that season that they're trying to explore here and it's honestly it's pretty smart when you think about the fact that mm -hmm. the first season of true detective is obviously the most successful one that this show has had by a pretty wide margin mm -hmm. season two mostly derided season three was you know a step in the right direction but i think hbo and obviously the producers and it's a different producer this time than the first three seasons but mm -hmm. i think there was a clear awareness of this idea of there's some unfinished business from season one and we can use the Tuttle family again to explore this idea of darkness within the world but how much do they matter to the story of Night Country like that's really what we're excited to break down here because the, the tentacles for the Tuttles go really far and there's a lot of history and you know as Childress, the antagonist in season one, even mm -hmm. said they've been around a long, long time, and it's dangerous now. Yeah, and we know that Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson are, you know, working behind the scenes on season four as well. So if they are dipping the pen back into season one, it's nice to know that they are, you know, EPs on the show. Yeah, and so we're going to get all into everything that is going on here. But before we do, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we have so much more information, updates, reactions on True Detective coming up. We don't want you guys to miss any of that. Also, every week on Patreon, we have live streams all about True Detective. Check out that link in the description below. And there is... Okay, let's, let's just get right into all of this. Okay, so... Tuttle United. So let's go back to season one here where we had Childress, you know, they, they were part of this whole sort of the misdeeds that were going on, we shall say, which, yeah. you know, was really under this umbrella of the Tuttle family, who was a really powerful family in Louisiana. They had their hands in everything. They had these schools. I mean, they had money, power, all of it. And they were like all up and down the coast of Louisiana. And, you know, the, the trailer for season four actually has a scene in it where it looks like they're in Louisiana. It's hard to actually tell exactly where they are, but it doesn't feel like Alaska. It feels like they might actually be in Louisiana. So <clears throat> how it all ended for just a quick refresher here, you know, Childress was killed and he had said, you know, the roots of this are really deep. This has been going on a really long time that some of the Tuttles did end up dead but there was lots of Tuttles that got away. And when we had Marty and Russ talking at the end of season one, where Russ was really upset about it, where he was like, okay, great. You know, we got Childress, but uh, the Tuttles are still out there. And Marty was like, listen, we can't get them all. We have to take a win where we can take a win. And I think that we should take this win. Except now we're here, you know, like 10 years or so later. That happened in like 2012 when they got Childress and all that happened. And here we are, you know, a, a little over 10 years later. And who's here? The Tuttle family. You know, Tuttle United is out in Alaska funding this research station. So the Tuttles in general, they are obviously extremely rich extremely powerful they have to be in order to basically get all these schools up and running and then be able to get students into these schools that they can sort of give them their teachings or teachings and not everybody obviously descended into the same level of madness that childress did but the ideas that are sort of being brought up in this world you know these 
ideas of Carcosa, the Yellow King, this just these dangerous ideals that these people are supposedly on this like elevated level that they have this greater sense of enlightenment and they understand the world and they understand the nature of darkness and it's a very complicated sort of rule set and i think it's potentially and deliberately unruly what the tuttles really believed in and were teaching because it just sort of morphs depending on who you're talking about and over the you know 10 plus years since the end of the Russ Cole and Marty Hart story, there's plenty of time for the Tuttles to regroup, to mm -hmm. figure things out, to sort of decide what they want their next move to be. I mean, there's a lot of mysteries <laughs> now when it comes into, okay, here we are more than a decade later. How long have the Tuttles been involved with this research center? We know that they are funding it now. We know mm -hmm. that they are connected through a shell company that is then collected, connected to Salal, but... How long does this go and how much are they deliberately after the end game here, which seems to be like this magical sort of ability to cure disease, to make the world a better place, which would be great. But in the hands of the Tuttle family, nothing seems great. Everything just seems awful. Yeah, this research and this idea that that they're looking for something where they're able to sort of play God, which is something that they were doing in the first season as well. The idea that they would get their hands on this being as powerful as they are. I mean, Pete even said, you know, the Tuttle has their hands everywhere now, you know, it's, they're really in this spot that if they get their hands on this, they could be sort of the most world powerful leaders in everything, you know, to have something like that at their disposal to either have disease or cure to disease is incredibly powerful. So that all leads back to where we are with Clark. What is his connection to the Tuttle family? Is he just like, random scientist that was hired on to go, you know, work up here with the other scientists. No, it doesn't feel like that. I mean, he's got the tattoo of the spiral, which is very connected to the Tuttle family and everything yeah. that was going on then, you know, back then they were, you know, killing children, young women. And now here we are with Annie K also has been killed, also has the spiral, had her tongue cut out. We saw that it looks like her and Clark had a relationship, but it's hard to tell from the pictures. Was this like a, an actual loving relationship? Because it seems like from the promo that it's like, oh, this was a secret relationship. If that's the case, and Clark was like really part of this a tuttle misdeeds that are going on, then maybe him having a relationship of any type was not something that they were going to allow under that umbrella. And they found out about it and they were like, sorry, Clark, but Annie has to go and she's going to go in sort of this ritualistic kind of way. You're going to be part of it. So then it feels like, okay, is was Clark then really involved in it in a way that he drank the Kool-Aid and was like, yes, this is the way that it should be. And he had a complete mental break. Or is he on a revenge tour where he was just like, I really loved her. And now this has happened. And now I'm going to ruin the Tuttle's life forever. Everything that they love, I'm going to pull it down. So I'm just going to play along and go up to this research station and I'm going to kill everybody up here. Okay, so there, there's a lot to get into with all of that. And I think one of the big questions is just, you know, at the time that Clark was brought on board, how much did he believe in everything that the Tuttles had in their mind? Like, this may be an instance of you say whatever you need to in the job interview to get the job, and maybe that's what happened with Clark, and maybe he, like, took a sip of the Kool-Aid, didn't get fully into it, didn't really understand exactly what it meant and then you know everything happens with Annie K and that that sort of fits the revenge tour timeline you're talking about then there's the other idea here as well that is just that Clark was fully all in on all of this stuff even back when he first got on board the research station and just slowly descended more and more into madness and more and more into their teachings and maybe he didn't even understand when Annie K was first around what it was going to lead to him doing but just he mm -hmm. continued to go 
down this dark road because I think a really big question that comes out of all of this is how much were the rest of the scientists in on the Tuttles and what was going on here? Were they just workers trying to do their job, not really understanding who they were doing their job for? And because yeah. Clark was sort of more inside all of it that he then had an understanding as to what they were doing and you know he had to stop them before it was too late and then things get really really crazy i mean just based on the fact that you know clark's got all these drawings and clark's got the tattoo he's clearly much more haunted by all of this than what we have seen from any of the other scientists at this point He's really down the hole with the Tuttle family and what they were doing in season one. Clearly, you know, Rust was right where he was just like, listen, like we didn't get all the Tuttles. Like this is a problem. And I know Marty was like, let's just take the win and go with that right now because that's that's where we are. But it's like he was right. Here we are, you know, over 10 years later, and we've got Clark here that has the same symbol. So things have not stopped with them. I think the hardest thing to sort of accept here with this show, and this is probably one of the prevailing messages, is that it's really hard to ever extinguish anything like the Tuttle family. Like, you can bring in every Tuttle known to mankind, and there's still going to be somebody <laughs> out there who believes in it. It's like mm -hmm. you can't fully eradicate darkness. You just have to hope that there's enough light to be able to combat it. And, you know, if they are going down to Louisiana at some point, like you mentioned this in the trailer, it does look like it's not Alaska. Like, I don't mm -hmm. know any part of Alaska. I could be wrong, but I don't know any part of Alaska that looks like that. Even the parts that are less snowy, <laughs> there's a bunch of trees. There aren't a lot of trees in what we saw there mm -hmm. in the trailer. So if they are going down there, I mean, yeah, there's a chance that they could be talking to Russ Cole about a number of different things. I mean, the question then just becomes like, okay, you know, where is Rust at at this point in his mm. life? How much is he really going to be able to help with something that's happening on the other side, I mean, of the country, and basically the other side of the world at this point? Well, here's the thing, too, with that scene in maybe Louisiana. We see, you know, Danvers going up to the place and going in, and there is a guy that's sitting on a chair, and there's a dead woman on the ground, and he's just got this weird smile on his face. Like... Is it still happening in Louisiana as well? And the other biggest question is, where is Rust at this point? Yeah. Did he stay in Louisiana? Did he go back to Alaska? Did he go to Texas? Like, where did he actually end up? Nobody actually knows. Yeah, and there are so many different questions that need to be answered. And, like, where I'm sort of landing on everything right now is that I think the Tuttles are obviously deeply looped into what's happening at the research station there's clearly a lot of connections that are there like i think at the end of the day night country is going to still have its own characters with its own motives mm -hmm. and i don't think it's necessarily meant to be a full-on sequel no. to the first season but i think they're clearly having a pretty deep conversation with the first season and i think they're basically saying okay we want you guys to still be thinking about this stuff we don't want you to forget about it because it's still impacting <laughs> characters in the present and you know who knows maybe true detective season 10 is going to be like the true detective avengers and everybody's going to come together to defeat them once and for all but like i said earlier i don't think there is any really defeating the tuttles once and for all i think it's pretty impossible yeah i think it's it's pretty impossible with how powerful they are and the reach and the influence that they've had on people who are not even part of the tuttle family or their corporation or anything like that i mean it, it was like that years back Back with Childress as well, right? Like they were able to influence a lot of people to join in on their killings and misdeeds and all the things that they were doing back then, which they clearly are still doing now. And there are people that are, you know, like Clark, who's not part of the family, seemingly, that is, you know, part of this to some degree. We just don't exactly know the whys or the hows yet. But you know, are we setting up for next season to be more about the Tuttle family? Or is this a little bit of a, a love letter back to season one to be like, Rust was right. <laughs> the Tuttles are still out there. They should have tried to do what they could to wrap that family up as well so that they could at least stop influencing people and stop it from growing as big as it already was then. 
but seemingly is even worse now. I mean, like now they're out of Louisiana and everywhere. It's just really funny to me how through a lot of season two and season three, when these were on, everybody was all just constantly like looking at the cork board being like, we want the connections. We want the connections. And it's like, don't get me wrong. There are Easter eggs here and there and all that. But it's like, now, finally, so many years later, it's all kind of happening. Yeah, this is not just Easter eggs at this point. I don't think I don't think anyone can really argue that these are Easter eggs. This is like directly connected now at this point. We have, you know, the spiral that, you know, from from the beginning, from season one, we have Rust Cole's dad up there. We have the Tuttle drop was the one where I was like, OK, this is not an Easter egg anymore. Yeah. This is like legitimately involved with season one we'll see where everything goes in episode three this week and rest assured we will have a review up at the channel the moment that episode is over mm -hmm. and be sure to hit that subscribe button and check out the card right there you can watch our most recent true detective episode review mm -hmm. so thank you so much to our patrons we really appreciate your support Thanks. we'll see you here next time